Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Uh, today, we're going to be making over this lamp in a shabby chic style. Uh, I had planned on doing a couple of other flips with this, uh, but I got a call this morning, and um, and my little granddaughter, who, uh, who ha is just trying to get over the stomach bug, wasn't quite ready to go back to daycare this morning, so... I had to uh, take her to my house and watch her, and uh, so I just decided to do this lamp to finish it from home, and like I said, I would have been doing some others, but it, it was hard enough to get this lamp done, and I wanted to put something on because it's been a few days, so um, uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll get to uh, add, add the other items or do some other flips. So here I'm just putting a coat of uh, pine cone from Dixie Bell, and I'm not sponsored, uh, but I wanted to keep this lamp neutral because I want the focus to be more on the shade because uh, we're going to be really making over the shade. Uh, so I just give this a, a one coat, covered it pretty well, of this uh, pine cone from Dixie Belle and uh, let it dry. And now I'm just using a white wax over it. I like the way this pine cone looks with the white wax. So that's all that I'm gonna be doing to this lamp. And uh, and like I said, this, the focus is gonna be more on the shade for this video. And the area that I'm gonna be using this lamp in uh, is gonna have all neutral colors anyway. So. Uh, I didn't want to add any real color to this. And here I've already taken all the fabric off this lampshade. Now when you purchase these lampshades, it's, it's important, or I try to make sure that uh, I, I buy the ones that uh, have these vertical wires down uh, on them. And uh, if you just have the circle on the top and on the bottom and it's held together with the lampshade, uh, or the lampshade fabric, once you take that off, then of course it's it's not going to be in the shape of a lampshade anymore. You're just going to have two circles. So uh, it's really important that you get the ones that have these uh, vertical wires. Now here I'm, I've just torn up some fabric and you can use any fabric you want. Uh, I prefer to use fabric that uh, that tears because I like that shabby look of the torn fabric. And it also cuts down on time because you don't have to cut these strips. You can just rip them and, and it just, it goes a lot faster that way. And here I think I'm using tea towel that I've stained. And, um, and then I just kind of ripped the seam all the way around the towel and then, and then just um, ripped the towel. And then I've also ripped some, um, this is a curtain shear that's made of lace and a lot of laces you can't rip and this one was a little difficult but it did work so i ripped this one up as well and here you could use ribbon or um drop cloth if you wanted i i didn't personally want the heavier fabric of the drop cloth uh, but uh, there's a lot of curtain shears that are very easily ripped you could even use um, just some old sheets that you've ripped up, some old bed sheets. So if you don't have a good fabric stash, you're not limited because you can just take some old clothing that, uh, that has stains on it or uh, that you've outgrown or, um, or you're just tired of. There's just a, a number of fabrics that you can use on this. Now I'm not worrying about measuring these. I, I do want some excess at the top. I'm just tying it on the top, just in a single knot on top and then on the bottom. And I want quite a bit of excess on the bottom because I like that flowy look that it gives and I'm not cutting them exact on the bottom. I, I like that some are a little longer than others. Uh, if you have one or two that are quite a bit longer, then obviously you don't want to leave that. You want to kind of trim that down. Uh, but I do like that it's kind of just um, has kind of a haphazard look to it because it just looks more flowy here. So like I said, I just tie these and I'm kind of distributing my fabrics as, as much as I feel like it needs. 
Uh, nothing has to be exact here, so uh, just kind of what looks good to your eye. And obviously, this is not the lamp that I showed you in the beginning because uh, I just brought the shade home uh, when uh, Ada and I went home. And um, this is just one that I had here that I could set, sit this on to, uh, to kind of steady it while I tied it. So don't let that lamp confuse you. That's not going to be in our flip. Now here, you could add color. Um, I'm just, I wanted this one neutral because like I said, the area that I'm putting it in is, uh, I'm going to be using neutral colors. Uh, so this lamp would work for uh, shabby chic or for boho. And I'm going to be doing some more uh, lampshades because you can do so much with these. Uh, you can give them so many different looks. And this is one that is super easy. Uh, but it does take a little time to get these all tied on. Uh, even with Ada's help, and she's a big helper, but um, it uh, this does take a while to get this done. But like I said, there's nothing hard about it. It's all very, very simple. So if you want yours uh, more simple, then uh, you could stop even at this point. Uh, and you wouldn't have to fill it in quite as much, but I wanted mine to be full. So I'm just going to keep adding to mine. Uh, and then we're going to embellish it with flowers later also. Now, uh, the flowers that I'm going to be using are the, uh, the rosettes. And I'm going to be making them from drop cloth. Uh, I do have another video, and I'm going to try my best to link it in the description. One of my viewers uh, kind of gave me some instructions on how to do that, and I hope I can remember what she told me. Uh, but I'm going to try my best to link that in the, in the description because I'm not really going to be making it very clear here. I mean, you'll be able to see me make them, but I don't think that this angle is going to be a very good angle for you to see. If you haven't tried to make over a lampshade, um, I really hope that you'll try it because they're just, they're just so fun to do. So I just keep adding to this, like I said, until I get it as full as I want it. And then, um, then I realized I can see these little vertical wires and I didn't really like that look. So now I'm just going to tie at the top of each of these vertical lines. I'm just going to tie a piece of this tea towel. And I'm just going to wrap that, um, that wire. And I'll turn it here in a second where you can see a little bit better. Um, I realized that, uh, that you couldn't really see what I, was doing, what I was doing. But as you can see here, I'm just kind of wrapping that wire. And it's very easily and quickly wrapped until uh, I've got it all covered with that fabric. And then I just tie a knot in the bottom. So I tie a knot in the top and then just wrap it all the way down and then tie a knot in the bottom. And then that gives that a much better appearance than just that wire. Um, because this is not really an industrial look that I'm going for. But see, as you can see there, it just it gives it a lot softer look. So I just uh, repeat that same process on each of those vertical wires and then, uh, and then it will be ready to add the floral to the flowers to it. So um, like I said, I'm just gonna be using the rosettes and then uh, that will be the only uh, place that we'll be using hot glue on this. Now you could add, um, you could add pearls to this. Uh, you could add, um, I guess if you like bling, you could add some bling. Um, but there's just a number of embellishments that you could add to this. And you could use different types of flowers. I feel like for this look, the rosettes kind of go better. Um, and they're actually my favorite flower to make anyway. So now I'm about to get this as full as I want it. 
and then uh, and then I'm, I start adding those rosettes. And somehow I missed the footage when I started those, but I'm making these rather large uh, because that's just um, that's the look that I want on this. Uh, you don't have to go as large as I am, uh, but then I'm just kind of hot gluing them. So I'm hot gluing them where in places where I tied there on the bottom, and then I also do the same thing on the top. And and I have this out of focus where you can't see that top well, but I just did the same thing, except that where I where I glued the rosette to the bottom. I kind of staggered it in between on the top, if that makes sense. You'll see it in the in the final picture. This lampshade would be really pretty done in soft pinks and used in a little girl's room. But as you can see, it's, it's very simple, just a little time consuming. Something that you could easily do while you sit and watch a TV program. Again, I'm sorry that this video is a little haphazard uh, but I'll try to uh, to do another one tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you'll try to uh, to recover one of these lampshades yourself. I think that you'll be pleasantly surprised at how fun they are. I want to say thank you again, guys, for all your support and all your sweet comments. Hope you have a great evening and God bless you and your family.